In the last video, we reviewed the concept of a contingency table. And then we talked about both the marginal frequency and marginal relative frequency distributions of that contingency table. Now we want to go one step further to something really special called the conditional distribution of that contingency table. It lists the relative frequency of each category of the response variable given, and I highlighted that, a specific value of the explanatory variable. But because a two-way table is two ways, which one's the response, response and which one's the explanatory kind of depends on the context of the problem. So you're going to want to look for by something. That word by kind of gives you direction. So if it says by the column variable, that means you're going to go down the column and you're going to divide every single value of the, of the table by its total of its respective column. And then if it says by row variable, you're going to do the same thing but across the row. So it kind of makes sense when you see it in context. So here we have our lovely contingency table that we've already seen for this history, cores, and ethnicity. And it says to create a conditional distribution of ethnicity by type of course. All right. So what that means is that we're going to work our way down the course type. We're going to go down the column. So let me scroll back up to the marginal frequency distribution right here, which is just a page before. And you can see that the top cell was 100. So there were 100 Caucasians in the American history class. And you're going to divide that by the total in the American history class altogether. So you'll take 100 and divide it by 300. Then the other 100 and divide it by 300. Then 50 divided by 300. And then the next 50 divided by 300. And that would give you the conditional distribution for ethnicity by the American history course. So let me scroll down here to the problem. I'm sorry, I've already done this problem three times and I've lost my videos. So here it is right there. Now we're going to do the same thing for the world history. Now the world history class, I believe, had 160 people in it. So you're going to take the numbers for the world history, take the Caucasian 40, divide it by 160, then another 40 and divide it by 160. Oh, sorry, 160 was the total for the column. And then 60 divided by 160 and 20 divided by 160. And while I'm on the subject, I'm going to do the same thing for this third column, but everything in the third column will get divided by 140 because that's my column total for that column. And that gets me this is the conditional distribution. And this is a, a columnal, right, by column conditional distribution because I'm working my way down the columns. Now you notice by the end of the columns, I should have one because I should have every single person in that column accounted for. So all 300 American history students are accounted for. That's why the total is 300 over 300. All 160 world history students are accounted for, and so on. All right, so the following are both valid side-by-side -side bar graphs of these conditional distribution, or this conditional distribution of ethnicity by course. So let's look. So if you look at the American history class, for example, it should be 33%, 33%, 16.7%, 16.7%. And you can see that right here on this left hand set. This is the American history class. You can see 33%, 33%, 16%, 16%. If you add up those 4%, you should get 100. But a way to better visualize that is just to do a stacked column so that it actually adds up to 100. Because then I can see easily that these two bars, the lowest sections, which are the Caucasian and the African American add up to about 66% and then they're equal sized and then these other two sections are equal sized. As a matter of fact, let me color these like I would in class with a highlighter. I'm going to change the colors of the graph so you can see it better. There, so now we can see it. So you can see that the blue section is the Caucasian and you can see and the red section is this African American section. And the blue section and red sections are equal to each other on this first bar. And then the Asian American and Hispanic sections, the green and purple respectively, are equal. Now if you look at world history, you can see that there's a disproportionate percentage of Asian American in that class. So if you looked in that class, you'd see uh, 30 some percent of the students are, 37.5 percent of the students are Asian American. And you can see that over here as well. You can see that green section there is larger than the other sections. And then over here in the European history, you can see that over 40% of the students in that class are, Europe, are Caucasian, and you can see that right here. But these, the stacked graph on the right um, better visualizes the fact that these columns must add up to one. 
All right, so I wrote this up. So both graphs show the same information, and they're pretty good at showing large differences. You know, you can really see the spikes in both of them. Over here, it looks like a spike for that European history Caucasian or for this Asian American green section here in world history. But you can see that over here on the right-hand graph with the larger sections. But the, the one on the right makes it a little bit easier to... Here, I'm gonna, the one on the right makes it a little bit easier to compare across the groups. And it also reinforces that the percentages must add up to one. There. So you can see, for example, when I say compare groups, you can see, for example, look at the purple sections. You can tell that European history and American history, you know, there's a good percentage of those classrooms. If you walk into those rooms, you'd see a good percentage of Hispanic. But if you go into world history, you wouldn't see so much percentage of, of Hispanic students, that kind of thing. Or, for example, if you walk into a world history class, you expect a, a large proportion to be Asian American. Whereas if you walk into an American history class, you do not expect a large proportion to be Amer Asian American. Right? So that, that's what I mean when I say it's a little bit easier to compare groups. So it kind of lets you look at the three different green sections or the three different red sections, that kind of thing. And also reinforces that the percentages must add up to 100%. Okay, so now we're going to create a distribution, conditional distribution of course by of type of course by ethnicity. Well, by ethnicity means we're going to go across the row. So we're going to take that same 100 in the top cell, but instead of dividing by 300, we're going to divide by the total for the rows. So let's go back here and look. We're going to take 100 and divide it by 200. Then we're going to take 40 and divide it by 200, and then 60 and divide it by 200. We're going to work our way across the row. And we'll do that for every row. So the next row, we'll look at the African American row. And we'll take 100 and divide it by 160, then 40 divided by 160, and so on. So I'm going to go type up all those numbers and put them into that new table. And there they are. So now let's look at a stacked column of this. And what I don't have, I have three of the columns already in here. And I'm going to change the color so it'll be a little bit easier for you to spot. And we're going to put in the Hispanic column. So you can see I chose the Hispanic column on for a reason because it's easier than the rest of them. Because it's 50% Hispanic, 50% um, of the Hispanic students are in the American history class, 20% of them are in the world history class, and 30% of them are in the European history class, which gives you 100% of the Hispanic students when you're all done. So let me change this so that you guys can see the colors. And there you have it. And actually, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and see if that'll maybe show up. There you go. Got the extra rows then. Now, it's really important to notice that these graphs are not showing you the same thing at all. So if you compare this stacked graph that we just did here with the stacked graph above it, or if you look at the tables, they're not telling you the same thing. So this first one is going down the class. So, for example, if I look at uh, world history, when I walk into a room full of world history students, 37% of them are Asian American. Or let's look at European history. When I walk into a European history class, 42% of them are Caucasian. And you can see that over here with the big blue section on this far right stacked column. Or you can see it with this big blue section, oops, sorry, I clicked twice, on this column. But either way, you can see that that's that large column. So that if you walk into a room full of European history students, almost over 40% of them are Caucasian. Let's look down here, right? This is looking at it a different way. It's saying, look at all the Caucasian students. So if you look at all the Caucasian students overall, it's not that the majority of them are in European history. 50% of them are actually in American history. Right? Only 30% of them are in European history. So instead of looking at a room full of European history students, you look at a room full of all the Caucasian students and they hold up little signs that say, I'm in American history, I'm in world history. Well, half of them would hold up a sign for American history. And you can see that right here with this blue section down here. Half of them are in American history and then only 30% of them are in European history. So they're not really the same thing at all. Let's look at African Americans. So if I look at all 160 African American students right here, 62.5% of them are in American history. So if they were standing in a room, all the African American students in one room, and they were holding up signs for what class they were in, 62% of the students, 62.5% of the students would be holding up a sign for American history. 
right? But if I go up here and I hold up, I have all the American history students in a room, right? Then only 33% of them are African American, right? Okay, so let me type that up. So I just typed up that African American history and uh, American history, excuse me, example. So it's it they're showing different things. They're related, but they're really the two distributions are really showing different things. This one is if you look at this column chart right here, this is by ethnicity. So you're just imagine a room full of Caucasian students, imagine a room full of African American students and so on. How do they shake out for their history classes? Right? And you can see, look at the African American column. Look at how blue that is. Right. Whereas if I go up here to the history class columns, right, and that's just saying, look at all the American history classes. Well, then the red and the blue are mostly equal. Right. And that's because there's more Caucasian students overall. That's why we're looking at these in terms of percentages, not looking at these in terms of raw numbers. All right. So let me scroll back down here so you can write that one more time. Right. So they're showing different things. They're looking at the same data, but in different directions. And that different direction, that column versus row thing, that matters because it completely changes your outlook for how you want to interpret it. There. And that changes how you interpret the numbers, how you compute the numbers. It all is based on which direction were you talking about. It's the same number of students. It's still, oh, however many, let me think, how many were in African American history? There were 40. So there were 40, oh no, American history, sorry, 100. So there were 100 students in African American, African American students in American history. So African American students in American history. So they were both 100. Their numerators are the same, but their denominators are different, and that changes completely how we interpret it. So 100 over 300 is a very different world than 100 divided by 160. There, and I just added in those calculations a little bit so you could have those there to refer to.